My name is Jules Optin Himmel. I'm the farmer and owner at Walrus and Carpenter Oysters. Got into the business because I studied environmental science in college and undergrad and graduate school and I was looking for a business that was good for the environment and profitable and learned about oyster farming and volunteered on a couple farms in Massachusetts and then my buddy and I just decided that we wanted to do it and so we started small and have kind of grown the business over time. We have our two unique varieties. We're growing our, our Dutchies are grown in Dutch Harbor, Narragansett Bay, and our originals are grown in Ninigret Pond in Charlestown. And based on the body of water that they're grown in, there's a big difference in taste. They're completely different estuaries. So the farm behind me is in Dutch Harbor and has a real influence from the ocean. So they're saltier here, brinier. They also tend to be meatier here. And then the flavor is just dictated by the environment. The vast majority of oysters you eat are farmed, um, and they're farmed by purchasing small oysters from hatcheries. A week ago, we got 1.75 million oysters from a hatchery in Maine that were only about a millimeter in size, and, and every year we get a package like that, and then we raise those oysters up for two to three years until they're market size, and you find them at Urban Greens. If we put them in a nursery that's under a dock, and it has boxes in it with very fine screens on the bottom and a pump that's always moving water, so the pump pulls water up through the boxes and then it goes out a trough. So that's bringing them extra food and oxygen when they're really tiny and it allows them to grow more rapidly than they would in the wild. By July, end of July, we'll have taken those 1.75 million out to the farm and they'll be about thumbnail size. So they go from one millimeter to like eight to 12 millimeters. And then we bring all those oysters to this farm and we stock them in mesh bags at 2,000 per bag. And we leave them in those bags for the fall and winter of that first year. And they grow pretty rapidly and they'll fill up maybe halfway as they grow. Around this time, this, their second spring, we'll start grading them with a big machine that separates them by size that we have on a boat. And then we restock those oysters at 200 per bag. For the next two to three years, those will grow and fill up the bag. And the reason we do that is we don't want the bags to become overcrowded because then the oysters won't get enough food. Uh, we also don't want them to become too heavy. The maintenance and husbandry of the crop is that we try to dry each bag every two weeks on both farms. Here by flipping the cages over, in Ninigret we prop the cages up. It's, oysters are filter feeders, so they need water flowing past them to eat phytoplankton. And if the bags are filled with seaweed and other animals and mussels or tunicates, and barnacles, then the oysters won't be getting any food. The only thing we can do is really control the density at which we stock them and how clean the gear that they're in is because we're farming just in the natural environment. We're not, we don't have any control over the ocean, obviously. So it's almost more like ranching or more like forestry where you can do things to enhance the crop, but a lot of it is out of your control. Once they become ready for market between two and three years, we sort them by hand. Each oyster gets chosen, whether it's a market size or it's too small. And that's really where quality control comes in and training our staff to make sure that they're the right size, have the right shape, that they're not dead, that they're clean enough. The thing about farming bivalves is that you don't feed them if they're farmed because they're eating phytoplankton. There's lots of little microscopic plants in the ocean and then the oysters filter them out. They're kind of like cows grazing on grass. The difference between that and fin fish farming is you have to feed the fish. They don't eat something that's natural. So you put them in a contained area and then you have to bring in another source of protein to feed them. And then that disrupts the whole ecosystem or changes it. You're also taking nutrients from one place in the fish that they're being fed and moving them to another location and altering the, the ecosystem by changing the nutrient dynamics. Whereas here, they're eating what's naturally here. Beyond the fact that it's sustainable, it also can be beneficial to the ecosystem because in most every estuary, there's too much phytoplankton because of human activity on land. So what we do on land in terms of fertilizing our crops and our land, disposing of our waste, burning fossil fuels, all those things produce nitrogen. And with all that nitrogen, there are big blooms of phytoplankton because they're fertilizing the plants. And um, you've kind of put the system out of balance, right? And normally that, those blooms will be kept in check by filter feeding organisms like oysters or certain fish. But if there's too much phytoplankton, they can't eat it all. Then that phytoplankton reaches a certain tipping point where it's used all the nitrogen and they die and they sink to the bottom. And then organisms 
eat them, and as they're decomposing, they use up oxygen, and you end up with very low oxygen in the estuary, which leads to fish kills and just an inhospitable habitat for most organisms. So while the estuary may look beautiful at the surface, almost every estuary near humans is degraded in that way, and it's hard for things to live in them. That's where farming shellfish comes in. If you bring extra shellfish back and you maintain them in the ways I described and keep them alive, they can help to keep that phytoplankton um, population in check. It's very hard for them to solve the entire problem. You'd have to have a lot of shellfish, but they're still helping solve the problem. I feel good about that and the, that you know farming this form of protein has a lot of benefits for the environment. Um, and some, you know, in terms of farm protein, pretty negligible impact, negative impacts to the estuary or to the environment in general. It was the beginning of the pandemic and we were really struggling because all our restaurants had closed and so we were looking for outlets and how we could sell all these oysters because if we didn't sell them, there wouldn't be room for the next crop. And I went to John and said, would you ever think about carrying our oysters? And he said, definitely. And like, he set up a promotional event where we brought, he said, bring me 1,600 oysters. And I was like, you're not gonna sell 1,600 oysters. Like, we, I maybe thought I'd bring you 100 a week and maybe you'd be able to sell those because they don't really sell very fast at grocery stores. But he was like, no, we're gonna price them at $10 for 10. And that's a great number. You get 20 for 20 bucks. People are gonna love them. And I was like, all right, I'll, if you want 1,600 oysters, we brought them and he promoted it. And they all sold out in like two or three hours. And I was completely shocked. I was like, I could not believe that happened. And I think a lot of it had to do with the pandemic and people couldn't go out to eat. So they were excited to get something that they got at restaurants. It was really an awesome feeling that, you know, he took the time to make that happen and it worked. And then we've been selling since, you know, not that volume, but weekly. And it's, it's, I take great pride in the fact that I can tell people to if they want our oysters that they can get them on Thursdays when I deliver them is the same day I harvested them and they're right there in the community where I live. Our mission at Walrus and Carpenter Oysters is to farm the ocean, restore the environment, and distribute our sustainable seafood directly to our community. And we made a choice to stay the size we are and really focus on our craft and our process and our team and I found that to be very rewarding as opposed to growing every year.